everyone, welcome to Harp at Home. This is our workshop five in series four. We're kind of in the second part of series four. We've taken a wee bit of a break over the festive period and we are back and it's 2022 and we are raring to go to learn the tunes and to take Harp at Home on the road again, thanks to the task of traditional small arts fund. So I, I hope you've had um, a good start to the year. Things are kind of on the up here, so I'm quite excited actually about our blender section later. But we, yeah, this is workshop five and we're on the road again. Before Christmas, we had a wee trip to um, Rochelle um, and we visited Shean Brown um, and Fiona Delgetti at Fish Ross and my pal Kim Richards in Ullapool. And we're going to go to Ullapool again today um, to meet someone who... I guess I've always known throughout my life um, my old music teacher, um, Valerie Pride. She's a very per uh, special person to me and you're going to find out why in this wee chat. So let's go, let's nip up to Owlpool. We'll see a bit of Owlpool, we'll have a chat with Val and then we're going to come back down here and we'll talk about the tune that we're going to learn today in today's workshop. and we are in Ullapool again at the start of this new series and I'm with someone who's very special to me, Mrs Brian as I knew her for so many years. <laughs> so formal. <laughs> <laughs> but also, well I knew you, I must, I want to say like, I mean your first name's Val but I knew you as Anna's mum for so yeah. many years in Strathcanyard. Yeah. So Anna was one of my best friends growing up and I used to go up to the house and you had, I used to play with Anna and the cat Tabby Oh, yeah. Which I, you know, we used to always kind of remember. Um, but you're kind of part of my story as a harp player because when I started to play at the Fish, one of the reasons I chose to play Clarsuck was because Anna played Clarsuck and I wanted to be with her. And it went quite well. And afterwards, I think the Fish must have spoken to my mum and dad, or maybe you did too. And we all kind of started going to lessons mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to Strath Canyard. To Strath Pepper. Oh, Strath Pe yeah, Pepper, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to Strath Pepper. <laughs> and at the time I didn't have a harp, but Anna did have a harp. And you very graciously agreed to, like, lend me the harp for half a week. <laughs> which is quite something, thinking back to it. And we have a little harp here, actually. So can you tell That's us a little bit about it? Well, I had a friend whose daughter, Rachel Young, played the harp and was doing really well. And started at Face Ross and she was doing so well her parents bought her a new harp which was a huge investment Yay. at the time. I mean this would have been about 1990 and we're talking at least a thousand pounds which is a lot to spend yeah, on totally. your child then. Yeah. Um, and Rachel was selling this one which she had had for a couple of years and I remember it was 200 pounds. Wow. Yeah so actually it's quite, it's quite a bargain, a bargain. Way, yeah. totally. Um, the thing with this one is it has no levers at all, so it's diatonic, you know, you, you can't... And we don't know um, anything about it. Now, you said that no. the Youngs got it from, is it John I D. Burgess? I think there was Piper. some connection with John D. Burgess's yeah, yeah. daughter, perhaps, yeah. playing. But um, I did try to track it down at once, but I drew a blank. So yeah, so we'll maybe, I'll maybe put a picture up online mm. to see if anyone can tell us if they recognise the shape. <laughs> but I've just always known it as the heart that I kind of learnt on <laughs> It's kind years. of made. You know, yeah. I, d I don't think, don't I mean, for instance, is. I think, is this the soundboard? Yeah. I think it looks as though it's in pieces. You know, it's like but a lot of bits yeah, joined I mean, together. It's got, but that's what yeah, you would but do. And 
there's no big gaps. No, and there, there no, are gaps it's been in it. well made. Learned. Yeah, it's been well made. And it's not collapsed at all in any way. Now I no. remember it being a lot darker. I think it was, was darker. Yeah. Yes, and um, someone well-meaning at some point decided to sand it all down. In fact, I think <laughs> I started it. My problem, but it was spe- it was so dark. It wasn't yeah, encouraging. It was really, you know, yeah, you, you yeah, sort yeah. Of want an instrument to to look nice as well. Totally, you know? totally. But uh, it's had various goals. Yeah, <laughs> but it was enough to get us started. Exactly, exactly. And it can still um, play a wee tune just now. I know too. Yeah, yeah. I'll have a wee go. Um, I'll wee play maybe one of the tunes I learned at Face Ross, uh, Punin and Cal, mm-hmm. um, from Wendy Stewart. So it's got the nylon strings and metal strings. So I'm, I wonder, it might have even originally been metal strings all over. We'll I don't think if, it was. Oh, I do think it was it's always nylon. nylon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well done, it's great. It's a lovely, lovely yeah. And it's amazing because it just shows you that you don't need <coughs> anything that's ex- like as far as harps go, if you can get, get just your hands on some kind of harp, it can mm-hmm. get you started mm-hmm. in your career. Because I, we must have kind of borrowed it between the two, if you, between Anna, for several years. Yeah, I don't remember. I uh, don't remember when you got your own one. Because I, I remember hiding from the Clarsa Society. I was going to say, I think, yes, that yeah. was the thing, is the Clarsa Society would hire harps. Yeah. And eventually Face Ross did yeah. as well, I think. Exactly. But it was always the thing in the early days yeah. of how do you get hold of a harp, yeah. you know? Totally. So. And, but that was kind of one of the things that just happened in villages. You kind of used to kind of borrow stuff yes. from people yeah. uh-huh. and things. Yeah. If there was something that had, you know, someone wasn't using it all the time, uh-huh. you just like... And I've it. always felt very strongly that if an instrument's there, it should be used. Yeah. definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. And so kind of thinking back to like, so... I knew you as Anna's mum and then but you were the music teacher in the village as well and I like you were my high school music teacher but I think you told me in primary I can remember yes. you coming in to, with the guitar yeah, yeah. yeah? I loved sense? teaching primary I always <laughs> loved teaching primary when I started in Ullapool in 1985 uh-huh. at the high school but because of the way things were happening and the size of the school uh-huh. I mean, it was only that year they had the first ever sixth year yeah so there weren't pupils studying standard grade or it was old grade and yeah. higher music there were very few um so my time was spent between Ullapur high school primary school mm-hmm. and i used to also go to akhilte Bui primary oh, and wow. badkal primary yeah and once a once a term i went to uh, scoreg primary oh goodness so uh, it was great that's good. some I mileage it. yeah I, it was it was interesting yeah but, but it was yeah good. Because at that time, the primary school and the high school shared the same they had campus. The same we were all in the same mm-hmm. kind of building. We shared the same canteen, same office staff, same PE staff, and same music, music staff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at that time, the, the high school was all quarter cabins. And there wasn't actually a lot of kind of instrumental tuition going on. But um, you had the best room of the high school, really, <laughs> as far as I was concerned. Yeah. <laughs> You had the hut. The tin hut. The tin hut, the green tin hut. <laughs> well, it wasn't green then. Uh-huh. It was grotty grey. And Ooh. I always say it would have been better for my morale if it yes. had been bright green then. <laughs> And it had linoleum, and I remember your class in primary one. Uh-huh. There was one little girl who used to sort of bum shuffle around the uh-huh. line of the whole <laughs> oh, And then I got a drum kit, and the kids all said, "When can we learn the drum kit?" And I said, "When I get a carpet." And that took a year. So <laughs> until you got the one. carpet. Yeah. But it was really the kind of pub event of kind of like everything like because we used to have the school choir but it wasn't really just a choir it was kind of the band yeah it wasn't your yeah. choirs and kind of the stereotypical yeah. choir yeah. was it well in, in a stereotypical school mm-hmm. you know the music teacher takes the choir and the other music teacher plays the piano yeah. but there was only one yeah. of me and i couldn't take a choir and piano yeah. and i had good guitarists in the school mm-hmm. so they played and it just evolved yeah it was it was about using everyone's skills mm-hmm. that they had you know, to the best of all of our abilities, and everybody was encouraged to do. Yeah, what and you they, were really encouraging with traditional music, and um, because that was really the kind of style that was around in the village and the surroundings. <coughs> Excuse me. There were no, there was no private tuition of music at all mm-hmm. at that stage in the village, um, and the only input which was support for me was mm-hmm. from Fasheros. Yeah. When it started. Um, and I taught in Whistle at the second ever Face Ross. And through that, I got to know so many musicians. Yeah. And they were so encouraging. They supported me. And I learned a lot of songs and tunes from mm. then, them. And then I passed them on yeah. to the pupils. It was just a learning 
Sure. Cool. And really? so many of those and tunes and be. songs that you taught us, I can still sing uh-huh. and I've been passing them on now <laughs> that's myself. Great. That's what the tradition is all about. I have a couple of kind of yeah. memories from stuff. So the, the school band, we kind of got a name after a few years <laughs> called Kjo Lagis Brocken, which means music and feet. And feet. And the reason for feet was that mm. we had one or two step dancers. They'd learned step dancing through the fish and yeah. some in their community. Uh-huh. Um, and so when we sang or played, they would do step dancing along with us. Did you step dance I as think well? I did. I, I think, think I did, did it at the fish again. <coughs> I must have learned it at the fish. And I remember there was a set of course wheel that we yeah. used to do. Yeah. Um, which I can still kind of, <laughs> I've kind of rambled it out every now and then and things like that. But these kind of memories stick and these yeah. tunes and these songs. Because yeah. you would have to learn them. Like I remember there was, was it Hatch's Misha, like a, yeah. a walking song. I remember having to learn that for a performance in Inverness and like having the words all around the house trying to learn them because <laughs> we were not, we had to learn the verses and it was in Gaelic, yeah, which yeah. wasn't my first language yeah. at all. So, yeah. but yeah, so yeah. We, we had merch, you see, <laughs> we had these cotton bags before cotton bags, whenever the kind of thing, calling is broken and... Yeah, you were saying to me earlier that this tune, there's the actual tune that kind of goes through it is a kind of Loch Broom tune as well. It's called The Brace of Loch Broom. It's... It was written by a, a pal of mine who was living in Ulster yeah. at the time. Brace of Loch Broom. It's and it's lovely, got yeah. our tour dates because we went on tour to in 98 to Germany. What yeah. I love is that, you know, you've got Bad Bertrich and Boppard and Achelty Boo all in the same Look thing. Look in like, and Ullapool and Inverness. Yeah, yeah, kind of all. And yeah, we had, um, I've even got my t-shirt, which I just keep everything, you see. Which is good. I knew there's a reason. Else does. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the kind yeah. of things that I have kept actually from kind of back in those days, and I still use this. Now, you all know that I'm kind of quite obsessive with Harp at Home with um, telling stories and the culture and the kind of sources of the tunes. And I think actually a lot of that is kind of stemmed from Val's work. Now this is a kind of book, we had a kind of song book for the Kjol Agus Brocken tour. And this has got all the songs that we did. And I still use this. That's great. Good. Yeah, Good. and it's great. And you were Excellent. saying this kind of came out of, like as a result of some other work you were yeah, doing. Yeah, I was doing a lot of work with Fish and Gale mm-hmm. and I was working on, on music books with them, mm-hmm. for them. And so the computing skills I learned to typeset all this, I picked up really through their support. Uh-huh. Um, in fact, I think they lent me a computer to do oh, the well, books on. Yeah. So that would have been the one I was doing these on as well. And it just, it all grew. It was mm-hmm. very, very organic. Even some of the songs and tunes in here, mm-hmm. there were things that I had learned from Tutors at the Fish. Yeah. Um, it's all about that, that kind of passing it down, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I, I suppose somewhere along the way I must have become part of the tradition. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, but yeah, there's some good stuff in yeah. it. Yeah, and these are the books. Sean and Faith, I have to say, <coughs> these are my copies, which are kind of, this one's not so bad kind of in condition, but this was the very first one, Sean and Faith 1, mm. which has no cover in my books, I have to say. <laughs> it's um, probably because the original one had a spine and the um, ah. binding, and the spines, the, the fronts all fell off. Yeah. So... <laughs> but they're great and they're fantastic source books full of kind of Gaelic tunes and what you've done is you've connected them to the different fashion around Scotland as yeah, well yeah ones that are yeah. local so that if you're teaching at these fashion yeah. you can kind of pick tunes that are from those areas and they're yeah. great because every tune has source material and kind of comments about the history of it which is really important kind of giving context yeah I mean at that stage people weren't very aware of mm-hmm. their own music from their own area. Yeah. And that's grown hugely. I mean, yeah. lots and lots of students now at the conservatory and yeah. so on are actually researching the music of their own mm-hmm. area, which is wonderful. Yeah. But at that stage, early 90s, there wasn't much awareness of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, yeah. But, I mean, this work that you've done is still used today. And you can get them. And I, I mean, I use them all the time. And I've used these books before for Harp at Home. And we're going to learn a tune from one of them as well um, today. But... You can get a hold of these now. They're out of print just now in this form, you were saying. They're out of print, yes. But they're available digi- digitally. Good, um, excellent. That I think for Kindle and for Apple, I mm-hmm. think it doesn't work on Android, mm-hmm. but with Kindle, you can change them. Yep. The other thing is that these were always copyright free. Yes. So I would assume that if you buy the digital edition, 
you can print out the music from those. But the thing with the like digital it. edition is that there's recordings of all the songs and tunes as well. Oh, that's so special. Which is, is really special. Because, and they're beautiful recordings. Because when you see stuff written down, like I sometimes kind of find I'll write stuff down and I sometimes folk at workshops will go, ah, but that's not how you're playing it. But it's uh -huh. only a suggestion, mm -hmm. isn't it? You mm -hmm. need to really yeah. try and source out yeah. how a tune is played and yeah. how a song is sung. Yes. Yeah. To kind of hear it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been amazing to chat and to yeah, up with you. To talk to you yeah. and to see this wee harp again you've done so well it's great i know well there's you know it's it's really down to you a lot of kind of like my love of traditional music because i think i kind of took it for granted when i was in the village <laughs> to be honest and it was only when i moved to edinburgh i suddenly I remember being in my music class and i had a very good music department in edinburgh i really did i was very lucky and fortunate there but i suddenly realized that folk didn't know the Athol Highlanders and mm -hmm. being a because mm -hmm. that was just something that we all knew in Alapool okay. and I found that I had to kind of source out mm -hmm. so I was always very kind of grateful to you for kind of mm -hmm. you know showing us that traditional music can be part of everyday life. Well it was survival for me yes. <laughs> because my, my only support really was mm -hmm. from the fish movement yeah. because there was no tuition in there was very good tuition in bagpipes mm -hmm. and then yeah. eventually about six years before I retired, mm -hmm. we got strings as well. But having gr grown up in the classical tradition, mm -hmm. I was having to learn all this. Yeah. And because I didn't have, uh, there, there wasn't a point of contact in any mm -hmm. other tradition. The, the music, you know, the Scottish and Gaelic tradition mm -hmm. just pinged yeah. to us all. And having so these, I was learning the likes of this as well as source books, it's that kind of bridge uh -huh. between folk who know the tradition yeah. and know the oral tradition yeah. to those who are used to reading yeah. as well and that's always really yeah. important kind of crossing yeah. those bridges yeah so and if you do get the books you read the introductions which tell you you always listen yes. first <laughs> yes exactly well lovely to uh, catch up with you and yeah thank you very much you're very welcome well done A huge thank you to Val for taking the time out to chat to me and to reminisce and to show me that wee heart. I honestly, like when I contacted her um, to ask her if she would mind having a wee chat for harp at home, she said, if you come round, I've got the harp, the actual harp and not really find out that much more about it. I did put a wee note in the Celtic Harp Facebook forum or Facebook group about it and had some folk that said it looked like a copy of an old harp. But no more information as such. So if you if you do know anything more about it, get in touch with me. As I say, I mean, we reckon it's from the 80s at least. Um, fair age. And, you know, it's still all right. You can still get a tune out of it as you, as you saw. And so I huge thanks to Val for kind of looking that out. And we managed to get it in tune with itself to have we play, a wee play of a tune with you. So on with today's tune. So we are going to learn a tune from one of the Keon and Fish books. It is from Keon and Fish book one which in my copies has no cover because it fell off. But this is a fantastic piece of Purseville. Now we've done pieces of mouth music Purseville before and we've had chats with folk about them with Joy Dunlop, great Gaelic singer. We had a chat with her out in our garden in one of the series. This is a tune that would be sung. It's a jig. So the words are kind of nonsense words and we're kind of yeah, we're playing the tune for it on the harp. This one is called Fakuna Fe, which means Did You See the Deer? And I swear, these are some of my favourite lyrics. Listen to this. Translates as Did you see all the deer, Murdigan? Did you see all the deer, Charlie? Did you see all the deer, Murdigan, up on top of Martin's Hill? Who knows if you did? Real Murdigan, dance Murdigan, real Murdigan, Charlie. Bread and butter for Jane, Murdigan, up on top of Martin's Hill. So we're going to learn this. I have got, as ever, um, the kind of full arrangement for you. I've got a easier version for you. And I have a harp two part, which is a kind of wee kind of a harmony for you. That is all on your music. This is this is a great one to play as a group, folk. So worth looking at this if you're back playing with folk. Um, I, I normally say um, I'm going to play it to you in front of the fireplace. But actually today I've taken the harp out into the hallway. Things are a little bit chaotic here. Um, we have folks staying and I can also hear that I think my neighbour isn't very well downstairs. So I figured it'd be a wee bit nicer to her this evening and I'd play in the hallway because it's above their hallway and I'll let her sleep on. So aye, let's head to the hallway and I'll play you this arrangement. <laughs>
It's a fun tune, eh? Nice kind of happy jig. Not too tricky to get your fingers round as well, I have to say. We'll head over to the green screen and we'll give it a go together. Then we will come back to the blether. I highly recommend the blether today. I have lots to blether on to you about because kind of lots of things going on and a rather important event happening in around four weeks time or less than four weeks time actually oh, slightly freaked out about that anyway let's head over and learn the tune together green screen time folks hi welcome back to a uh, harp at home and we are back here and learning a fantastic piece of Portia Bell, Fakun and Fae. Um, this is just one of these tunes that I've always known, so hopefully you like the sound of it. As ever, we will. I will play you the melody first and then we'll get uh, busy learning the melody before the left hand. But first off, of course, we need to work out what key it's in. It is in D major, so you need your F sharps and your C sharp levers engaged. My harp is tuned to E flat major, so it means I have my E's, A's and B's on as well as my Fs and my Cs. If your harp's tuned to C major, you'll just have your Fs and your C levers on. Righty, oh, so I'm gonna play you the first part of the tune. These parts are really small, actually, so it's not gonna take as long at all to learn the melody. Um, and I've kind of arranged it really for three times through, as you heard, with a little break section and with an intro. So have a listen to the first part of the melody. it's in six eight so it's going one two three two two three six eight has six um quavers in the bar or six oh am i gonna say eighth notes in the bar but i instead of going one two three four five six i tend to count it as one two three two two three because you've got that kind of beat that's where you would tap your foot on the one two three two two three so that's how we're going to kind of be working things and i'm going to be counting in therefore in two we are going to start off with our thumb on d and our second on a so we're going to be anchoring our thumb because we're going to have three a's in a row have a listen i'm going to share the work between my second and my third so i'm going to start with my second on a then using my third on a and my second on a so let's just give those three notes a go together one two nice one more time one two lovely we are now going to tumble down from this d to this d but missing out the c now there are no c's in the melody of this tune i'm going to use a cheeky c i think in my a uh, kind of a break section but in the melody of this tune there are no c's at all so stay away from the red c's in your right hand melody so have a listen this is how i'm going to do it second on the D, on the B, sorry. We're going to use two fingers, then we're going to cross over and use two, and then we're going to go down three. So our thumb is going to end up, well, it's on the D already, then it's going to end up in the A, then it's going to end up in the F. So have a listen. So I'm going to one and two, crossing over to A and G, crossing over, and playing down F, E, D. Let's get to the top, let's give that a go together. So we do it in groups of two, D and B, Two A and G, three F E D. You ready? Let's just go from that top. I'm going to count to two so that we can do that. One, two. Cross over A G F two three. So you've got your long thumb, long thumb. Then two two three. Let's have a go of that together. One, two. Remember two, three, two, and then we start tumbling down. After two, one, two. Excellent, one more time. One, two. Brilliant. That's our first phrase. Have a listen to 
our second phrase, it starts off the same way. So, thumb is anchored on the D, we have our three A's and we're going to play our three A's and then the D. So let's give a go at that, three A's as usual and just the D by itself. One, two. Excellent, lift your hand off and now I want you to place on F, G and B. Third and F, second and G, thumb and B. Have a listen to the rhythm of this. Let's give that a go. After two, this G is going to come on the B of the one. One, two. And one, two. Go for it again. F, G, B. One, two. Nice. Let's add on the three A's and the single D before that, and that makes up our second phrase. After two, one, two. F, G, B. Nice one, one more time. One, two. Ah, that is our second phrase. Okay, so you know your first phrase, you know your second phrase. Guess what? This is a good old tune and repetition. Third phrase is the same as the first. So it's the three A's, the D coming down tumbling down to that lower D, remember, no C. Let's give our third phrase a go. So that's the same as the first. Are you ready? One, two. Brilliant. Cool. Okay, let's give it a go then. Phrases one, two, and three. We've nearly done all of this first part already, guys. Really doesn't take long to learn the melody, as I said. You ready? After two. One, two. tempo a little bit after two one two third phrase same as the first two three come and tumbling down from that d to the lower d lovely we're now going to stay down there our ending phrase we're gonna is gonna kind of be based on an e minor triad have a listen We're going to play our G first, then we're going to have three E's, and we're going to use the same fingering as we did for the three A's. So that means, thumb and G, two, three, two. Okay, so sharing the work, two, three, two on those E's. Are you ready? Let's give a go at that. We've got the G before it, then three E's after two. One, two. Lovely, place on an E triad. Now, clearly, really, I want you to really place that on because we're going to play up that. It's going to sound like this. Okay, place on that E triad. So that's third finger and E, second and G, thumb and B, E, G, B. We're going to play up that after two. One, two. Lovely, replace. We'll go for it again. One, two. Excellent. So that ending phrase, G, three E's, then another E triad. So it means you end up with four E's in a row there, okay? The last one is part of that E triad that you want to clearly place on. Let's go for that ending phrase, our fourth phrase, after two. One, two. Good. One more time. One, two. Okay, so you've done all your first part. First phrase, remember, three A's, tumbling, tumbling down from the D to the D. Three A's again, a single D at the top, lifting your hand off, then replacing on F, G, B. Third phrase, same as the first. Then the ending phrase. Okay, will we give it a go? See how it goes? Um, yeah, let's go for it twice round. You ready? One, two.
this one. Okay, have a listen to our second part. You will recognize the ending. Have a listen. Okay, so thumb on A and third in D. We've got a little phrase here. Last thing, one bar, one measure that repeats round three times. Have a listen to it. That's our pattern. Thumb on A, third on D. So that's a gap of a D fifth there. We're going to play our A, replace it back onto the F as you're playing that D. You see how that works? Then we're going to play down those three from F. So we have A, D, A, D, down three from F. Let's have a go together. One, two. Nice, one more time. One, two. Next, okay, so we play that three times in a row. Let's go for it after two. One, two. Your second and G and your thumb and B. We're going to play a G for one beat and a B for one beat. After two, one, two, G, B. Nice. So you're just simply adding on G with your second finger, B with your thumb. Let's add that on. So three times around that rolling part, kind of rolling, rolling, then G, B. Ready? After two, one, two. Have a listen to what happens next. We go back to our first part. We borrow the third phrase and the fourth phrase. Okay, so did you see what happened there? We went back to three A's, tumbling down from the D, missing out the C, remember? And our ending phrase, which was G and three E's, and another E as part of your E triad. Yeah? Get what happened there? Well, we see if we can go for all of the second part already. So you've got the rolling thing three times, G, B, and then you're playing your third and fourth phrase from the first part. Let's give it a go, folks. After two. One, two. Excellent work. Alrighty, that's all of your melody. Okay, now there are debates in this tune whether you do the repeats or not. If you repeat the first part twice or you repeat the second part twice. Uh, for the purpose of this arrangement, I didn't go for the repeats, but you might want to add in the repeats yourself. Okay, feel completely free to do that. Um, let's go for the whole of the melody A part, then the B part. Are you ready? After two, three A's, then coming down, three A's and a D, F, G, B. Yeah. One, two. On to your second part, tumble. Or rolling, I should say, sorry. <laughs> Nice one, folks. 
Okay, let's move on to the left hand for this tune. So I've got, essentially I've got three different left hands, but there is not drastic big changes in this. Okay, what it is, is just kind of, I guess I could have rearranged the things um, with the left hand and the range of where we play it as well. Have a listen to the first part left hand for the first time round. <laughs> register of the bass clef um, that we use on the harp. We are starting off with our fourth finger on a low D, happens to be a metal note on my harp but that's a D below middle C. Then I'm going to hop up and I'm going to be using the C and the D, it's a nice kind of little kind of clashy kind of second there. Second and C, thumb and D, C and D, keep your thumb in the D and then we're going to play a B and a D. So you go one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now this is the kind of rhythm I've used before in jigs with you guys. Gentle syncopation, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to count to three. That's me counting the quavers, the eighth note. See if you can join in with that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is on the one, the low D is on the one. Two, three, one, two, three. For those additional notes up higher. You ready? One, Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three again. One, two, three, one, two, three. Nice. Okay, let's see if we can match that up. I'm gonna match it up note to note with you so you know what's going on if you can't kind of feel it. Okay. So our first D is gonna go with the first A, and then the C and the D is gonna go with the third A. So it's going to go. I'm going to count to two, so these are the main beats now, the strong beats. One, two. Okay, you ready? Let's go for it again. Actually, I might. I'm going to count the quaver beats for you. One, two, three. One, two, three. Nice. Our B and our D, handily enough, is going to go with the B when you're coming, coming tumbling down. See if you can get that in. So it's going to go with the B as you're come tumbling down. I'm going to count the quaver beats again for you for this. One, two, three. B and D with the B. Nice. Let's go for it again. One, two, three. Brilliant. Next bit. First two notes are going to match up the same way with the first A and the, and the third A. Now your F, your B and your D are going to match up with the F. Remember when you're going up F, G, B, it's going to go with the F. Okay, so with the F. Let's have a go with that phrase. I'm going to count the three. One, two, three. extra chord there as well, a G fifth if you can, keep your thumb in the G and move your second or your third, I prefer my second, to the G, so you've got a G and a D, okay, will sound like this, one, two, three, it's going to come just before you play the B in the gap, see if we can add it in, one, two, three, phrase same as the first so works the same way B and D with the B you ready third phrase one two three brilliant okay let's try those three phrases hands together give it a go don't worry if you can't do it you can pause rewind rewatch at your own uh, leisure after three one two three And so 
then but we're going to have an E fifth and then we're going to throw in the G fifth in the same place that it actually came already. If you have a look at it, we're going to have our E fifth with the G at the first note. Now you have your three E's of your, of your melody placing on your E triad. If you have a look at that, that's got that G and B. After we play our G, before we play our B, we're going to throw in a G fifth. Yeah, so E. Did you see what happened there? After I play the G, I play the G fifth again, and then the B. Let's give that just that bit a go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Nice, you ready again? One, two, three, two. Excellent, let's give that phrase a go. Again, I'm counting the quaver, quaver beats now, okay? One, two, three. Oh my goodness, did you see what happened there? I used the wrong finger and my fingering got kind of uh, all mixed up. I went for third finger first. Oh, let's give it a go for the benefit of your tutor. After go after three. One, two, three. G fifth. Nice, one more time for good luck. One, two, three. Alrighty, cool, that's good. Let's go for all of the first part with the left hand. Yeah, ready? One, two, three. Let's go again. One, two, three. Nice one. Have a listen to the left hand with the second part. to the second line of it but let's work in this bit where we've got the rolling okay where we've got the rolling thing comes three times so we've got a kind of repeated chord sequence that comes three times we're going to start off in a low f with our fourth finger then we're going to play an f third an octave above so an f third is the f and the a so we'll go f to f and a for our second time we do our rolling little pattern in our right hand we're going to move it up one note so it'll be a low g to G third, a G and a B. Okay, then we have the low A to the A and the C. Again, just a little pattern, everything's moved up. So you have your F to the F third, G to the G third, and A to the A third. Now you might notice I'm also doing what I've called considerate damping. We've done a lot of this before in Harp at Home. When I'm damping the note and sliding to the next one, because otherwise, it's going to get really muddy down there with our metal strings. Have a go and see if you can work in that in your own time, that little bit. All right, let's match this up. It's going to go with the first two notes. Okay, so go together, together, then you roll down from the F. Okay, let's try the first one. I'm going to count three so that you get your, your quavers, your uh, eighth beats, <laughs> eighth note uh, counting. One, two, three. Our left hand up one note to the G and the G third. You ready? One, two, three. Move your left hand up again to the A and the A third. You ready? One, two, three. Nice. Let's see if we can do all of that together. The three rolling bits. One, two, three. Good. 
and the G and the B just comes by itself that time. Let's give it a go. That's our new bit there. One, two, three. Good, one more time. One, two, three. Gonna use a relative minor to D, so it's a B. So that's the only. We're doing a simple chord, a simple note substitution. Instead of the D to C and D and B and D, we're gonna go for the B. Okay. See if you can throw that in again this time instead. One, two, three. Good. And this is the same. So we have the E fifth. So you've got your low B instead of the D. One, two, three. Nice work. That's your second part. Let's give it a go. After three, all of the second part. One, two, three. See if we can go for all of the tune with the left hand. So that's the first time round, and then we're gonna chill. I will show you the little break bit and the other times round. Let's give it a go. So dun, dun, for our first part. What after three? One, two, three. Remember, you can pause and rewind and have another go of that. Let's have a look at this kind of little, kind of wee joiny, joiny up, breaky bit type thing, which goes like this. Um, if I start on the right note, it goes like this. down row D, C, B. Gonna go down that triplet, move your thumb to the C, go down three from C, keep going down, we're gonna go all the way down until our thumb finishes on that D. Let's give it a go. After three, I'm gonna count those quavers. One, two, three. left hand. So we're going to join up with that D there, both hands together. When you hit the B, you're going to have a B third with your left hand. Then it's going to follow the pattern down A with the A third. And nothing with that D at the end. Did you see how that worked? Let's give it a go together. So the thirds, remember, B and D, two notes apart. Dun, dun, dun. So you're going D to B and D. Let's have a go of it twice in a row. One, two, three. 
one, I'm going to do it nice and slowly. One, two, three. One, two. section we're going to use that um, before this second time around the tune and we're going to use that at the end of that as well so have a listen to the uh, what we're going to be doing for the second time around the tune what i'm basically doing is moving everything up the octave so right hand is up the octave and the left hand changed a little bit as well have a listen to what it was last time and this is the kind of things just subtle things and that have changed and I encourage you to kind of do this with your own arrangements as well change just little things move things up the octave separate your notes instead of playing them together etc so this bit is a little bit different though d158 d a d in our left hand right in the treble clef there d a d and then we're going to play in an f and an e an f third okay it's going to work d is going to go over the first a a with the third A, you've used that position before, and then your thumb at the top is going to go with the D. So your thumb's both on that D. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, so that's a little bit of a different rhythm to what we've used before. See if we can add that in after three. One, two, three. D's. Good with that F here, we're going to have our F and our A coming up. As we're doing the last three notes of coming tumbling down. That's where our F and our E happen. Let's give it a go. One, two, three. Nice. One more time. One, two, three. Lovely. You're almost going to keep to the same chord here, except you're going to use your bottom note up to the E. So you're going to be in E, A, D. It's going to go with the first A with the third and the D together and we're still going to have a G fifth there before the B. You see what happened there? So we've got E, A, D, G fifth before the B. Let's give that second phrase a blast. One, two, three. E, A, D, G fifth is before. Nice, one more time. One, two, three. same as the first so you're back to your D chord and your F and your E. One, two, three. Brilliant. Ending phrase we're going to keep the same but all up the octave so an E fifth and the G fifth before you play your B between your G and your B. Cool so D A D F and A E A D G fifth D A D F and A E fifth G fifth Okay, so subtle changes. Some things are the same, but just up the octave. Other bits are a little bit different. Let's give that a blast. After three, I'm going to count those quavers. One, two, three. Hopefully you can see that. One, two, three.
similarities. Before we had, remember, we had our low F to the F and the A. We're going to have the same, but up the octave, but we're going to separate the F and the A. We're going to separate the G and the B. But we're not going to separate the A one. It's just because it gets a little bit too clashy when we get right up close there. Okay, it's a little bit too much for me, that. Okay, so we're going to go, it's going to go with the F, 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 A. Together, together, and your last A is going to go with the last note of the rolling down. So F, F, and your thumb note of your left hand, which is on the A at that point, the D. Yeah, let's give it a go. After three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good, one more time. One, two, three. Same idea, but a note up with the G, G, B. Are you ready? Same way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Nice. Then your A and your A and C is going to be the same as it was, so just with the two notes. One, two, three. And your G by itself. And your B by itself. Yeah. Let's give a go. See if we can get that line going. You ready? One, two, three. So it's going to be B, C and D, yeah? One, two, three. And your E fifth and your G fifth as usual. Good, so that's the same as it was before, just the octave up. Excellent. Let's go for all that uh, second part left hand. Are you ready? One, two, three. the second time round of the octave thing so yeah you ready D A D then E A D yeah one two three We've done our break, we've done our second time round it, sorry, same first part when it should have been first, first time round it, break, second time round the tune, break, now we're on our third time through, which is going to be exactly the same as the first time round, but when you did your fifths, your E fifths and your G fifths, going to get you to do octaves, so it'll sound like this. pause and have a go yourself to that okay pause now and then start again let's let's give it a go then once through and we're substituting octus instead of fifths um yeah and low down and again that's just kind of beefing it up you ready one two three Exactly the same idea. And um, when we get to the ending phrase, we're going to have a low E and a low G. You ready? So you have your like that. You ready? 
one, two, three. point if you go for D octave you could go high if you want low if you want and a D there okay so let's let's go for the third time around the tune and finish it with a D octave and a single D yeah give it a go and then my goodness we'll have a go doing the whole tune see how it goes so third time around the tune octaves instead of fifths after three one yeah uh, I was about to count two there I'll stick to counting three actually the quavers one two three Is a finish. Maybe that would work. See, now I'm thinking off the top of my head. Um, yeah, let's give the whole arrangement a blast. No, wait, I'm going to tell you the intro. Introduction. Ah. We're just going to do three A's and a D. This is what I use for it. And I'm going to have left hand on the second, first, and the third one. So it's that original left hand pattern that we started off with. because we don't have the next note, yeah, so then just a right hand by itself, and then it goes again. Good, so in total you end up playing that, believe it or not, eight times round, okay, because there is the harmony section if you're going to play it with the group, which is on your sheet music and you'll hear it with the harmony as well. Um, or I played it in front of the fireplace. So, yeah, that's your introduction. Um, then we do the first part, the break, second part, the break, and then the third part. In fact, let's do an outro. Let's go for the break again, the outro. I'm thinking in my head now, I'll probably will record this in the fireplace like this. Um, what we're going to do for the outro is your break, starting up there. <laughs> in the spot for you guys today at Harp at Home and <laughs> you will have that in your music I will write it out um, it's basically the break break an octave floor I'm finishing on D's are you ready we'll give the full thing a go um, I'm just gonna count one two as opposed to the one two three okay after two full tune one two
Okay, so there you go, Fafiona Faye. Um, let's head uh, back over to the fireplace and you'll hear it again with that uh, harp two part harmony. This is going to be a really great one, I feel, for you to kind of be doing in groups. Jigs are always nice to do in groups and especially kind of happy ones as well, which um, this is a D major tune, nice and happy. So thank you very much. Let's head back to the fireplace now. <laughs> learning that um as i say do have a go at um, playing it with other harp players it works well as a group one and you can have lots of fun so uh, that's three times around it but you can do it till the cows come home repeat it and repeat it and repeat it so welcome to the bull leather section and um, we are kind of almost at the end of january here and um, the last four workshops things were going a little bit downhill but my goodness things have turned and they are on the up and things are no longer being cancelled. They are happening. It's a little bit insane. I've just had the most kind of crazy week. So um, things started to kind of get a little bit more restricted. They restricted gigs and stuff. I had a gig at Celtic Connections with Ron Jappy, my guitarist in the diary. And that along with all the Celtic Connections got kind of put on a, oh, we don't know what's happening. And everyone was freaking out. Um, they lifted the restrictions just on Monday gone, which meant that uh, events inside of more than 200 people could go ahead and our venue can hold 400 people. And we were told that it wouldn't be able to go ahead unless it would be able to open to full capacity. So we we're like, yes, thank goodness we can go ahead. So it's been it's been insane. Like it's kind of almost, I want to say, been a little bit more like a usual January for me. Last week I had five workshops playing out at schools for Celtic for the festival. I take my harp out and I do mini concerts. I do like three mini concerts in each school to the youngsters. And that was insane. Like I haven't been in, set foot in a school for years now um, because of what's happening. And it was so good. And it was just amazing to see the kids response to the harp, especially actually the primary fours. Now the P4s are, they're all around eight years old. And if you think about this, what's going on, like they were kind of five, six when all this hit off. And for many of them, they won't have really heard live music up close at all in living memory. Do you know what I mean? Because it's kind of hard to remember when you're younger. And the f their faces when I started to play was just amazing. And it was just it's quite emotional actually seeing them. So yeah, that's been great. So the past week I've been doing that and my fiance Adam has had um, a gig with his band McLear at Celtic, which was like bonkers. That was like sold out. Um, like it was, it was amazing. It was like I think it's the most talked about gig at the festival so far. The McLear are a group, kind of three of them from the Isle of Man, and it's like party music, but it's like really happy party music, and it's just feel good. So I highly recommend checking you them out. Um, so super proud about that, but. Um, as a result of that, um, the keyboard player Dave, who's Adam's best pal as well, has been staying here with us for the past week rehearsing. So our flat is in absolute chaos because he's here, 
our pal Russell is also staying. We also have, we also have the Piper of flute player Calm Stewart. You know, he's the guy who wrote Looking at a Rainbow. Um, some of his stuff is here as well because he's in the city. Um, and my fiance is also playing with him later this week. So our flat is kind of like the centre base for people leaving stuff if they're staying in hotels in town, <laughs> for people leaving their cars as well. Because we have free parking outside, so everyone's been dumping their cars at our apartment here. So it's been manic, like teaching, rehearsing, um, doing these workshops, like, and going to gigs. Like, um, I've been to two gigs now, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, it's been epic. And I, this week, I want to say it's a little bit calmer, but I don't, well, no, it's a little bit. Dave leaves on Monday, um, and then I've got rehearsals, and then there's rehearsals here at the flat, and then Callum's coming in for a rehearsal, um, and I've got rehearsal with Ron, and then, oh my goodness, I can't even remember. Oh, yeah, and in, in the midst of all this as well, also trying to uh, start out the American tour, which we're going on tour, me and Ron. We kick off on the 11th of March, hopefully. I need the visa to come through. We have had to expedite it, which is a total pain because it's a lot of money to expedite it, but we've done it. We've just gone, stuff it, let's go for it. So fingers crossed that will be through in the next like couple of weeks. I really want it to come soon um, <laughs> because of various reasons, but obviously I want to go out and tour. Be epic to see you guys. I'm going to give you the tour dates. Now, I've not really released that much information about it yet because um, we're just holding back the info until we know it's definitely going ahead. I think it's like 99% happening, folks. So I will be putting up more information on my website. Um, I'm also aware I'm filming this, like, you guys are in a big snowstorm right now, so I don't think you want to be thinking about going out. So, but um, we start off in New Hampshire, then we're going to Vermont, then possibly down to Massachusetts, to Cape Cod. We're not sure about that. Um, upstate New York, uh, near um, Hudson. Um, the Hudson's quite big, isn't it? Um, and then we're down to Maryland, Pennsylvania a couple of times, uh, Bethlehem and near Pittsburgh, near DC as well, Maryland, um, Westminster, which is where Common Ground in the Hill takes place. So yeah, we've got, it's looking like we have seven or eight gigs and a little bit of time off, a couple of days in the middle when we're going to be near New York. And now I've been to the city before, but Ron hasn't. So he is like beside himself in excitement that you might get to go to New York. Um, so he's <laughs> really excited about that. Um, so that's great. But we could do that coming through because slight like kind of, um, it, it will be fine. I can get married in a few weeks. So this is really cool. Finally, we are on third time lucky, getting married, which is great. Um, it will be three weeks on uh, Friday. So Friday the 25th of February, which is really cool. But um, I need like, I need my British passport to get married because I need to get my registration document. Um, I can't use my Irish one because I'd have to fill in all these extra forms. So I need my British one. I need to show it to the registrar two days before the actual ceremony. Um, but I might also have to leave my British passport in Belfast with the US Embassy if I go before. So there's a little bit of a date clash with that. Apparently I might be able to show my mum's birth certificate as an option. They were a little bit vague Glasgow uh, registry office. They were like, they were panicking on my behalf, I think. I was like, oh, this could be an issue. Um, so we've got that and yeah, so I'd quite like the visa to happen really quite soon so I could get that back because if I can get my, if I can get the visa sorted like literally in the next two weeks and get the passport back in my hands, that means I can get my registration document to get married and it means might be able to go on honeymoon <laughs> before I go on tour. Um, Cause I don't really want to have to go to Belfast to the US embassy for my honeymoon. I mean, I want to come to America, don't get me wrong, but I don't really want to go to your embassy during my honeymoon. Um, so yeah, this is, this is what happens when life starts to happen again and, and passports get involved, I swear. Like, I mean, I've got two passports cause I've got my Irish one, but it would actually be easier right now if I had two British ones. I'm not thinking about that. It's just it's bonkers. But it's, you know, the wedding plans are going to plan. Um, we are nearly sorted. I need to message my venue today. That's what I need to do. Um, I need to remember that I've got that on my to-do list. I'll do that after I've filmed this um, about flowers. Um, I'm really excited. We've got some epic music planned. 
I'm going to tell you guys, actually, you, you see, I figured not many of you, I don't think any of you are coming to my wedding, don't think any of you are my guest list. Um, I've only got a couple of heart players on the guest list. Um, I'm going to tell you what our party is. It's so cool. So we have an amazing Gaelic band called Drams, which is led by Scott Wood. Scott Wood is the guy who recorded my last album, Sparks. Um, he's part of the band Skitty Boar. He's just, he's just, he's a good friend. So Scott Wood and who else is in it? Adam Brown and Jack Smedley, who play with Rura. And Adam also plays at Emar with my Adam. And um, a guy, another guy called Scott, who I was at uni with. So, so excited that the Kaylee band we've got are our pals, which is really cool. So they're going to do a bit. And then in Scotland, what you do is that. And then you have your buffet, but you have like filled rolls. You have like a bacon roll and a Glasgow sausage roll. Um, or a square sausage roll. They're not actually called Glasgow sausages. That's what I used to call them when I was little. Um, and then, now this is top secret, you guys are totally getting into this. Then we are going to have a few numbers by the singer Paul McKenna. Um, not the hypnotist, but Paul McKenna, the Scottish singer, who is epic. I went to see him in concert last night and like, he's a good pal of ours. But his voice, like Paul just looks like he's got kind of tattoos. It's like quite hard man. And then he just opens his mouth and this just stunning voice comes out. So super excited um, that Paul's going to do a set. And then after that, we have the Mighty McGlear, the top band about Celtic Connections, are going to do a set as well. So they've got about, I think they're doing about half an hour or something. Um, and then after that, we have Paddy Callahan, Trad Disco. We've all mixing in all the trad hits with like all the popular sets. And so he's a really good pal of ours. I think I've told you about him before in these uh, blather sections. So he is doing the bit after that and then we'll put a playlist on after an hour to give him a break but honestly it's gonna be the most amazing gig ever like Akili, Paul McKenna, McLear, Paddy Callan, Tara Disco, it's a good party so very excited about that. Um, hi so we saw a lot of them this weekend actually which was great um, but it's been a lovely weekend my mum had we managed to squeeze in I'm not really it's just because like because life has started up again and things have been pushed together um, we've not really had time for a proper Hindu, so my mum organised like an afternoon tea for me yesterday, um, which was lovely with the family. And um, I'll put some photos up now. Like, um, epic afternoon tea at Cromlick's house, which is owned by Andy Murray, the famous Scottish tennis player. Um, so, oh, sorry, that's birth certificates and stuff. And my mum put together a lovely photo album, all full of photos. I'll show you some of the kind of classic cutie ones of me. And younger and also this epic one of me I'm such a cool skateboarder with my Wellington boots on that's uh, um, in our garden in Liverpool and even a really old one actually of me playing harp which I haven't seen this picture before so I don't know where that came from my mum obviously found that but that was in our newer house in Liverpool before we kind of moved to the big city and um, so yeah really nice of my mum to do that and I got the kind of classic things I got to wear like right to be and this lovely little hairband, which I think I wore for about 10 minutes before my eight year old niece, or seven year old, sorry, she's eight on Thursday, seven year old niece stole this. So, but it was, it was lovely. It was really lovely of my mum to do that. And my, my auntie from Anchim came up for it. And my other auntie and Joy as well, who's my uh, uh, bride, uh, chief uh, honour, chief, chief bridesmaid, whatever you call maid of honour. And Lindsay, my sister-in-law, is my other bridesmaid, and my little niece, who's my flower girl. So yeah, it was it was a really nice time. So I think that's that's literally all the time. I, I like Joy was speaking to me. She was like, "Are you sure you don't want like another Hindu, which is more party style and crop cocktails here in Glasgow?" But I said to her, "Like my weekends, like between now and the wedding, next weekend I'm playing at Celtic Connections. Weekend after that." Um, I'm off to the Netherlands to teach, which is epic. So pleased to get to go back there because I got pulled this month because of quarantine, but it's all going. Um, and then I have to be on Zoom for the Isle of Man. And then the next weekend is a wedding. Like, I literally don't have time. And it would stress me out if we had to do something. Um, so um, we're not. And I'm not, I'm not too gutted. I mean, originally we were going to go to uh, near Belfast to an epic spa over there. Um, the plan was to do that. Um, back in my goodness September 2020 but yeah so but that's not happening and you know not too gutted I think something over the past couple of years you kind of get used to things not happening 
but you kind of, I don't know if it's like you get used to disappointment because you don't really kind of get disappointed now. I mean, I was gutted at the time, I think, because it was the first thing to go, but um, now I'm not gutted about not having someone like that because all I just want is my wedding with all my loved ones there and all my best pals and that alone will be dead special. Like the amount of folk that are coming over from the Isle of Man and from elsewhere around around the place, um, we haven't all been together for years now. And that's going to be so special because we'll all be in the same room and we're going to be seeing, um, seeing each other and enjoying our favourite music and that's going to be really cool. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. I'm going to head round to Joy's now actually because I'm staying overnight at hers because Adam is having a stag afternoon today. I didn't have time, to, I had mine yesterday so and today I've been filming but I don't, I don't want to think what he's up to. Um, but yeah, he's here. His friend Dave is here. He's sleeping just over there in the sofa bed. Russell is in, in the living room next door on a plot bed. We think we might also have Luke staying with us tonight because there's a storm coming. And in fact, I think we might be after six o'clock already. Trains in Scotland, um, we're shutting at six o'clock because of this big storm that's coming. We've kind of put in a big warning. So Luke was getting the train home. So I think Luke might be staying here. So I'm gonna look out some blankets and stuff um, in case he is, so that he doesn't, yeah, so he has a bed to sleep on. So yeah, crazy times, but good times. I'm glad that things are on the up. So I'm babbling on, but then that's where this blither section's for, isn't it? Next week, we're gonna journey even further. And I'm really excited about this one. Although, I mean, I'm really excited about all my workshops, but this one's gonna be particularly lovely. We are gonna have some epic scenery in the next one. Um, do tune in. Thank you for uh, purchasing the sheet music for this. Thank you for all your further donations that several of you, of you have made over the years, or yeah, it's been a couple of years now, and all the series. Um, and of course, remember to subscribe to Harp at Home um, um, both in the mailing list and on the YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. So take care and I'll see you next week.